Welcome to the Roy Snar Show, entrepreneurship and giving back. Now, here's your host, Roy Snar. I, I remember listening to one that very similar. It was this guy giving a motivational speech, and he's like, you know, he took this kid out in the ocean and he put his head under the water, and he was like frantically, like, you know, how bad do you want to breathe? And he's like, oh, bad, I'm freaking out. And he goes, that's how bad you got to want success. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So and that's what's hard because, you, you know, you can make, I remember when I first started in this journey, I was like, oh my goodness, dude, if I could make, 50 grand in a year, uh, my life would change. I remember calling my mom when, we, when I first started and I was doing well. I was like, guess what? I made over $5,000 this month. You want, let's go out to dinner. Like it was life changing <laughs> for so me. Cool. And then yeah. now it's like, I look at it, I was like, oh, okay, we spent that this week, uh, you know, but it, it's, it's, you know, you can become comfortable easy, but you have to always want that. And like, if you're not waking up, like to what, you know, Luke was saying in the middle of the night, panicking, like I got to do this. And if you do it for a bigger reason than just money, the money will always follow. Yep. That's what we tell all of the agents we work with and all the people we work with, like, look, always do the right thing by the person. You'll sleep good at night, you'll feel good. And the money will naturally come. And then the more that you do good, the more that you give back, the more that gives, you know, gets given to you, basically. Yeah. It's like a ever revolving wheel. Yeah, and I would tell you like, don't be afraid if you're starting out today and you just want to make the 50 grand. Yeah. If you want to make the hundred grand, totally. that's how I was. That's how you were like, like, it's not wrong to, Hey man, why do I have this yeah. business? I, I want to get rich. Like I, I want to be successful. Like that's not wrong. Yeah. But anybody who's had success like you, right. Or mm -hmm. myself, it's like, you realize, Ooh, after you get to a per certain point, you never feel like you have enough. You no. always want more. <laughs> exactly. That's the weird thing about money. And it's yeah. why it's dangerous. But, um, it, you do realize that, wow, what's going to motivate me to make that phone call that I don't want to make, that's going to motivate me to get on a show where maybe sure. I feel uncomfortable to get on or not qualified, is you have to have a bigger purpose. You right. have to have a bigger reason. In life, Ray Dalio talks about the stages of life. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah. And, and he goes, the third phase that everybody enters into after your build phase and maintain phase is you give, right. the give back phase. Right. And that really is what life's about is once you make it up to a certain place on the mountain, success is so fleeting and so unfulfilling right. if you don't reach back behind you and pull others up and you get true fulfillment out of actually giving back and the yeah. impact from giving. And that's why you have to have that as part of your brand and part of who you are as a human. Yeah. It makes you feel a lot better. I mean, even now, like sometimes our donations are small, but it's like, well, at least it's something and yeah. it's, it's a selfless move. It just makes you feel better mm -hmm. overall. And you know, like what Ray Dalio says, he has another great book. Uh, what is it called? Like cycles or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that. A uh, very intelligent person, but if you look at it, like one of the things that struck me about that is like the different stages of life. And the biggest fear that I always have is if I'm sitting in that rocking chair and I look over to my wife and I said, you know what? We could have probably done things differently. We could have had this. Uh, I should have done this. The biggest thing that, that scares me is regret. So you can either have discipline or regret. They're both painful, yeah. but I would much rather take the discipline because when I'm sitting in that rocking chair with my glass of bourbon and a cigar at that time, because I won't care, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, we did everything we could. We went balls to the wall. I mean, everything, we gave it all our, our all. And that's, yeah. that's what keeps me going too. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. Um, that's why I ultimately, I, you know, you hear people talk about your body, mind, and spirit mm -hmm. and, you know, some add yeah. the soul, right? But right. Um, it's like, there has to be to me a higher level purpose sure. to why you exist and the borderline getting philosophical here, yeah, totally. but it is, it is truly like, you know, one of the most powerful things I think you can do is ask yourself the, the main question of your worldview and your worldview mm. is why do you exist? Why were you created? What is your purpose? Right? Cause I believe everybody was put here with a purpose right sure. now. I'm a person of faith, so yeah. you know, I won't get preachy on people, but it's, you know, I believe you're put here with a purpose. Like if you look at you know, humans, nobody has the same fingerprint. And what's unique about it is even twins, identical twins right. don't even have the same, same fingerprint. Right. There's no one like you. There's no one that can give your contribution to the world. Yeah. And you were called to give your contribution to the world. Right. And so it's like, once you realize that, Hey, if you're feeling out of alignment, I promise you, if you don't feel, um, like, you have a reason to get up. If you feel mm -hmm. discouraged, if you feel down, if you feel unmotivated, look at what you're feeding your body, mind, and spirit. I promise you in one of those pillars yep. in your life, one of those things is off. And every time I have felt down, unmotivated, discouraged, beat up, tired, wanting to throw in the towel, I look to those things. And I go, well, mm. look, what are you feeding yourself? Well, you're eating fast food. When was the last time you got to the gym? You know, what, what, how are you actually right. inputting? So you, you live in the bed you make. 
So it's like the yeah, veg you make point. is what you consume. And so, boom, if I get my health on track, all of a sudden my endorphins are firing better. You're, you're made up of chemicals. Your chemicals are firing totally. better, right? More properly. And, and I know yeah. there's medical conditions, all that stuff. But then you look to your mind and you go, what are you feeding your mind? If you feed your mind, keeping up with the Kardashians, Tiger King, whatever, <laughs> Tiger you King, name I it. it. The, I don't know what the latest show is, but right. if you feed your mind that, what happens to you is it's a bank account. You're depositing into your bank account. Yeah. So when you need to have a withdrawal, meaning you need to give of yourself to others, when you go to withdrawal out of your bank account, what do you get to withdraw? You get to withdraw the content you've consumed. <laughs> yep, I love it. Right. Yeah, that's so totally you, true, if man. you you have to put into your bank account content that will lift you up, right? right? And so and then it's, you know that's your mind. Your mind also is who you surround yourself with. We could talk for days oh, about yeah. your your people that you surround yourself with, right? You put a flower in the desert, it dies. You put a flower in good soil and it, and it blossoms. It's like right. your soil is who you surround yourself totally. with. Totally. But then you have your spirit, mm -hmm. which is to me is that side of it where it's like, what is it that you're doing this for? And who mm -hmm. are you in your identity? I'll tell you a story. It's like, I remember one of the hardest times in our business is I figured out we had done our taxes wrong. Um, and, you know, without sharing confidential information, <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed of it, but you know, we had hired a VP of finance and he had been with us a couple of months and he comes to me and he goes, Hey Luke, uh, your sales tax, how are you paying that? I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, magazines aren't taxed. Right. And, and hmm. they weren't at the time of the business, you know, in different early states. years, different States, things yeah. change. I didn't keep up with it. My fault. No excuses. Can't take excuses to the bank. And he goes, no, no, no. You have to pay sales tax. So I'm doing all my income tax, federal tax, all this stuff. Well, it turns out, man, like I'm talking millions, millions <laughs> and millions in back taxes. And um, dear IRS. Yeah, how exactly. Are you? <laughs> exactly. So there's this program called the VDA program, right? Where you can volunteer the SCOs. And, you know, I went through years of basically making all this right. But here was the, the point of sharing this story is like when you get hit with knowing that, wow, uh, this, if the state finds me before I go to the state, it will sink my business. It mm -hmm. will sink my business. When you get hit with something like that, I looked at my VP of finance at the time. I said, hey man, we can get through this. Don't worry, we'll take it one state at a time. We'll Here's so the annex. Just, so <laughs> I, dude, I went to community college for two years and then I went, I, I never took an accounting, accounting class or anything like that. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know accounting. And I just, don't quit on me. Well, two months later, he quit on me. You know? yeah. And so I'm up there at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 a.m. at night, every night, trying to figure out how in uh, North Carolina, in this township, in this county, oh. which I was just brutal, right? Trying to figure out all this stuff. If you don't have your identity locked in, yeah. if you don't have your purpose locked in, and yeah. that type of adversity punches you in the gut. Oh, yeah. You're quit. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. The most important thing you can do as an entrepreneur is to lock in while you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. Because that why is bigger than that tax problem. Bingo. Yeah. Because man, there was many, many nights where I was like, <laughs> oh God. And and sometimes you're, you're like in quicksand, you're like, well, I can't get out even if I want to, right. you know? So, but it's like, but we made it through that, you know, praise God. We made it through that. Makes you better, makes you stronger. Um, makes, I won't make that same mistake on my next business. Oh, you know, that, that stuff I owed, you know, paid a lot of money. I didn't want to have to pay and, you know, ended up paying it, but yeah. I just share that with people to, you know, just encourage you. It's like, one is you don't have to be very bright to be successful because I'm not bright and I made it through. Yeah. And then two is like, you got to lock in your purpose, your identity. You got to, you got to know your why because it's got to drive you through those times. Yeah. And that's to me what resonates with me. I mean, I, I have so many stories like that where I, can, I look back now. And one of the things that was said to me one time that I thought was powerful is like the wolf in the closet never really is a wolf. It's all, it just turns out to be a bunny. Meaning, hey, what oh. you're scared of, hmm. what you what you think's gonna sink you. You know, when I got my first lawsuit, or when I made the first mistake, and we ended up losing this huge account, and it's like all that stuff is like this is gonna sink the company, and you get emotional about it, you oh, get yeah. drama about it, and right. all that stuff. And it's like today, yes, it hurts. Today, I still feel you know like ah, oh, but but I don't let it affect me in my and suck my emotional energy out because it's never gonna be the wolf that you think it is, and you just gotta like my grandfather said, yeah, wake up put one foot in front of the other, do the right thing. 
and, and keep going towards your vision. I love that because, I mean, you sharing that because we're all vulnerable, right? And you're show, sharing like, hey, look, I screwed up, made this mistake. Because sometimes people, they'll see success like, oh, well, it's easy because you've already done it. And now you're perfect at it. Like, yeah. We all continuously make mistakes.